Hey, how's it going? <laughs> oh man, I probably look like crap. How did this happen? What's wrong with my eye? Well, let's just say that uh, Ethan Ralph can definitely handle his liquor better than I can. What is an Ethan Ralph? You might not even know. Here he is on the screen. This is an Ethan Ralph. Let's go watch Ethan Ralph play. That's an Ethan Ralph. And that's all brought to you by a combination of Maker's Mark and Xanax. Now, I don't take any Xanax. I don't do that. I mean, I don't take my mama's prescriptions. I mean, or anyone else's prescriptions for that matter. But goddamn. <coughs> no, we went to the Cidercade in Houston. It's a pretty cool place. I don't really do cider much. So I was like, okay, whatever. But that, it's an arcade. They have a buttload of games. Uh, you pay 10 bucks. You get in the door. You can play as long as you want. Um, every game has like a, you know, a button you just push. So, so every game you can think of, uh, like, like the games you used to play back in the day, but you couldn't beat it because you didn't have enough money. It could continue. Now you just push a button. You got in, infinite lives. So not only do you get to play a lot of classic games or even current games, but it's like, it's like cheats are enabled. You got endless lives. It's good. Uh, and of course, you're there. Ten bucks in, right? Of course. But they get you with the cider. They get you with the freaking cider. It's like six dollars a piece, six to nine dollars a piece. I don't drink a lot of cider, man. I don't like fruit. I don't want fruit. I want beer. But I got Texas tea, which is pretty much like uh, just tea and lemonade or whatever with a kick. All right, fine, fine. I'll take that. Add some ginger beer. So I got like. Three or four of them. Everything was fine. And I was playing games. I was playing the Super Contra. That was pretty fun. And I, and I never played the arcade version of it. That was pretty cool. Um, you know, obviously, we played The Simpsons <laughs> and beat it. I mean, though, it's not really it's not really difficult when you have endless lives, right? Like, anyone can beat that game as long as you just continue going in. <laughs> Why are you wearing your Richard Simmons workout gear? <laughs> This is to keep the the sweat from getting into my eyes. That's what it is. Mm. How you doing, Chauncey Fat Sack? Mm. Uh, let's see. They had Soul Edge, which is like Soul Calibur, like like the, the original title for Soul Calibur. That was pretty fun to play. I mean, a whole list. I mean, the back roll roll was nothing but um, a pinball machines. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, I mean, the hardest thing, I guess the most annoying thing about the place is that it's crowded, heavily crowded. And you pretty much have to wait your turn for the machine or whatever. And good luck getting any any of the gun games like Time, uh, time Crisis. Pfft, dude, everyone was playing that. But, uh, so... That happened. We had a couple of ciders, and then after that, we went to this place called a uh, underground hall, which is like just like a little mall thing underground, like a food court, but underground. It's kind of cool. Uh, they have like a bar. So got a couple of beers, a couple a couple of blondes, and then uh, <laughs> you know, ate. After that, came came home, and the neighbors are outside. I go out and. Pfft, uh, have a bottle of Jameson. I drink the rest of the bottle. It was it was a, about a, a good size, I'd say. Uh, but for whatever reason, all the the combination stuff, I just couldn't handle it. I, I, dude, after after drinking that bottle or part of the bottle anyway, I should say, uh, I was about to puke right there. I stopped myself. The neighbor caught me, and I was like, "Oh man, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good." No, I go home. I'm not fine. Immediately, my wife went to bed, and I'm about to go to bed. But I just had this this feeling. I just had to go. Went to the restroom immediately. I must have puked so hard. I must have puked so hard. 
that it, it just ruptured blood vessels in my eye. So that's how I got this. <laughs> so I'm not hung over anymore. I mean, there's still the, the after effects, like feeling rough. I mean, I had like three bottles of Gatorade and Three bottles of Gatorade, coffee, water, and, you know, it's just all, all that. The hangover's gone. Way gone. Now it's just this fucking eye. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez the ways. Mm. So, that's the Cidercade story, and that's why I look like I got punched in the face or something happened. Maybe I got a cybernetic eye. That'd be cool. <laughs> uh. So, Chauncey Fatsack. Do you, do you are you enjoying the Church of Baby Metal? I'm this rant and chill has taken quite a um it has become kind of like a J metal, J rock place. Sort of. There's a vibe to it. And they like it. They just want me to shut up during the reactions, which hey, I could do that just fine. <laughs> Make it easier, okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's let's get into the CRT. Let's get into the critical race theory shit. Let's do that. Uh, I think by this by now everyone knows what critical race theory is. Um, it's a it's a theory that's brought to you by a lot of legal scholars and activists. Mm, good combination: legal scholars and activists. Activists that are lawyers that have an agenda to try to tackle some laws, to try to tackle some systems, to deconstruct them. Working with activists that will definitely deconstruct them. Good. Amazing. So not historians, not scientists or researchers. No. Lawyers who have a habit of lying. That's what they do. They get paid to lie. And activists who just, just, they're just annoying. Annoying. They protest, they throw Molotov cocktails, they just want to disrupt and whatever. So they come together and they come up with this theory, more or less. And uh, if you know anything about critical theory, it's a, it is a Marxist theory, okay? Uh, where you look at particular pillars of a society, it critically analyze them. Not on any sort of scientific basis, but just to be critical as in like, you know, to really overthink uh, a particular, in this case, let's say race. Simplify it, overthink it, and without really any data or science behind it or research, you just start making up stuff. You start making criticism of it. And that criticism on face value is supposed to be like followed by gospel or like gospel. I mean, the idea is that on... They want to, with critical race theory, they want to separate us, divide us, put us against each other more by race. It's not going to take care of racism. It's not going to undo racism. In fact, if anything, it's just going to encourage it anymore. I mean, if you're teaching kids that, hey, because of the color of your skin, you are oppressed no matter what you are. No matter what you do, you will not succeed. It's very good. It's going to be really hard for you to succeed because that because of He's the other person in the class because of the color of his skin. He's always an oppressor. It doesn't matter how poor that kid is. It doesn't matter if that kid is in a trailer park. It doesn't matter if that kid's getting beaten by his dad or, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on there, but just simply because he's white, he's always going to be an oppressor. That's it. So it's, it's teaching kids to hate each other based on race. That's what it's doing. It's teaching kids to hate each other based on race. And they want to teach this in schools. They are teaching this in schools. There's many schools that are reacting to this and want to push back. Good. Good. Because we shouldn't be teaching racism uh, in school. If you want to teach the history about uh, racism in, in America, that's fine. That's fine. Cover slavery. Cover, cover Jim Crow. Cover the KKK. And, hey, make sure you do the history on the KKK. Huh. But what party was prominent members of the KKK? Hmm. I don't know. The party that's in control right now, that's true. 
They'll be like, oh, but but the they'll come up with some sort of bullshit. They always do. How's it going? Uh, Chauncey says science denying is uh, thinking IQ and genes mean nothing. Yeah. Critical race theory is very profitable. Yeah. Huh. You're nuts, bro. I love reading the uh, weeb comments. Now, I have thought about where this channel is going. You know, as far as reacting to a lot of J Metal, J Rocket stuff, on it, which I don't mind. Um, I actually do like that stuff. I haven't really done much on anime, and I'm probably not. Because honestly, I don't really watch much anime. The last anime I watched was like Cal. Well, that's, that's not the last one I watched, but I think the last one I watched was finally Neon Neon Genesis. Okay. All right. That really... Yeah, I'm not going to really be doing that. I don't see that. Anyway. So, let's... This chick here is on TikTok. She has something to say about critical race theory. She has a, a question to propose to us to prove that America is ultimately a racist country and needs to be destroyed. That's kind of what CRT is all about. It's also part of like the 1619 project um, where it's like America was founded on racism. Not like any other country wasn't or whatever, right? It's not like racism doesn't exist in Africa or in China. Try being a black person in China and you'll definitely see how, how racist they are. Okay. Uh, I mean, oh, racism's everywhere. Racism's kind of like a human condition. I mean, we, we are... We have evolved to see patterns and to, based on those patterns, make certain decisions. We we click up, we group up. Uh, those are in the in group. Those are in the out group. Uh, if if you are in the out group, we're going to treat you differently. It's this is basic human psychology. I mean, what I'm telling you right now is no. It's not rocket science. It's not, you know, it's not anything uh, too out there. It's it's basic human psychology. Okay, you can get it in like a one on one psych class. Uh, Anyway, let's play some of this chick. And um, first off, she looks she looks like a. I'm just gonna say I don't know this chick, but she kind of looks like a white girl who tanned a lot. Maybe she is a person of color. I do not know. I'm just saying. And I will say this: uh, where I worked, I used to work. I worked with a, a bunch of brothers, and I'll tell you this much, man. Even they start talking about light skin privilege. So based on what I know from that, working at where I worked at before, working, working with a bunch of brothers, that they would even say that she has light skin privilege. So I don't know what she's talking about anyway. Would the United States trade all of our black people for wealth and resources? This would the United States trade all of our black people for wealth and resources? Let's play that again. Would the United States trade all of our black people for wealth and resources? This question comes from a paper and short story made by Derek Bell, who's a critical race scholar. It's okay, so this whole question is brought up by uh, Derek Bell, who's a critical race scholar. Now, Derek Bell wrote this as a short story, a fiction, a piece of fiction, make-believe, a fairy tale, nonsense. So that's where this question comes from. Uh, what America trade... It's black people for uh, resources. You mean like how Africa did? I mean, if you want to get to it, let's just go right to the beginning here. Uh, when the slave trade started happening. I mean, what country sold their own for money? What country did, did that? America did it too when they got rid of certain jobs. and But shift the jobs uh, uh, overseas. But that's a whole different thing. This is where we're talking about actually trading people, people's lives. It's Africa. And they still do that to this day. So, I mean, <laughs> all right. It's often used as a thought experiment in ethics, morality, economics, and racism. Okay, so boom, aliens come to Earth. So, my question is, is, <clears throat> is, um, is Africa racist? Is it? I mean, if if they go to Africa and, and they they sell their own, 
<laughs> Are they racist? They tell the American government, we will give you enough gold to pay your national debt. We will get rid of pollution. Pay. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. wait hold on here. And we will give you a renewable source of energy if. All right, let's back that up real fast. So wait, aliens come to Earth. Born aliens come to Earth on a UFO or whatever. They're going to give us enough gold to pay our national debt. First off, we don't even use gold anymore, so that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Uh, like, that's not going to pay off the debt. And that's nonsense. There's no way that the alien would have that much gold in his UFO or any in any of that stuff. Uh, okay, but okay. Pay enough gold and we'll get rid of pollution. I mean... Pollution and we will give you a renewable source. We kind of like pollution, though. I mean, I, I, I'm not... When I say I like pollution, I'm saying that... Look, I know paper straws are probably better for the environment. But I'm going to be using plastic straws anyway because it just is what it is. How about we work on ways to uh, break down plastic... And uh, the whole recycling thing, it's a total fucking, total fucking uh, grift. And it really is. A lot of those plastics just end up being shipped off to Malaysia or some shit. Uh, no one seems to know about that or going off into like the Philippines or some stuff. No. Total freaking scam. <laughs> anyway. Energy, if you give us all your black people. America thinks about it. So, all right. So we have to trade all of the... America has to trade all, or if, the, if America wants this deal, all the gold to pay off national debt, uh, renewable source of energy, uh, no pollution or whatever, you got to trade all the black people. Okay, well, the problem with that there is uh, even if certain politicians were interested in that, um, like, first off, no, there's like, there's like, it'd be illegal to round, wait, wait, what, where does she think she lives? She thinks we live in America, 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 because in America, like the government can't just round up every black person, put them in camps and or shipping containers or whatever, and sell them to uh, aliens to come from outer space. That, that's, that, that, none of that is happening. None of that stuff is happening. They might do that to, uh, to, to MAGA guys. <laughs> Or Q and all, whatever. Uh, but f f black people, no, 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 th th that's not happening. I don't know. I don't know where she, where she thinks she lives. It's illegal. The other thing is, the politicians want to do that. What? The conservatives wouldn't do it because there's plenty of. Plenty of black conservatives and people who, I mean, conservatives aren't racist. Okay, that, that's the thing. Uh, that's like a, a straw man people like to do. Be like, oh, uh, con con or ad hominem, conservatives are racist. It's like, they're not racist. What are you talking about? Republicans aren't racist. <laughs> and if anything, it's the left. Especially if you want to call them like the alt left or whatever, the left that <clears throat> that are pretty racist, openly racist against well, white people. Just about. I mean, if the aliens asked for for them to gather about white people, maybe they would. No, nah. I mean they still wouldn't be able to do that. It'd be flat out illegal. It wouldn't even happen. It's crazy. They vote and they send all the black people to space. And if your initial response isn't, we would never. But but we would we would never. That. The initial response, we would never, is true. We would never, and it would be impossible. Like, that wouldn't even happen. That that's that question isn't a piece of fiction, because that's what it is. It's fantasy. It's science fiction. I'll be sent to the Mar Martian gulags. Yeah. It's more like, the U.S. might do that. And that speaks to how American progress might be more valued than black human life. American progress is more valued than black human life. I like how she's saying this on TikTok. I wonder if she's using this. Well, no matter what phone she's using, these precious minerals are being mined by black kids in Africa. So she could just shut the fuck up and get off her soapbox. The whole virtue thing. Uh, I don't know what it would be, uh, these people. I swear they think they are high and mighty on their own fucking shit. When they'd be like, oh, you know, America is such a racist country or whatever. Motherfucker, you you are using products right now that are uh, brought to you by the sweat, blood, and tears of African kids. Do you give a fuck? If you gave a fuck, 
you'd probably stop. Oh, oh, but you're not going to stop. Because you like the convenience. You like you like what this is. <laughs> Fucking hypocrites. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> uh, Drago, how's it going? I believe I have a perspective that transcends all these matters and issues, but most people seem to value the opportunity of inequality with them on top, which requires others to be on the bottom. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, in any society, whether it be capitalism or uh, communism or socialism, there are going to be those on top. There are going to be those on top. You're going to have your elites. You're going to have your polit politicians. You're going to have... You're, you're going to have those on the bottom that are working. At least in a capitalist society, if it's... Uh, if you're able to do it, save up money, get some capital, start your own business. But any more, any but right now the way things are going here in the states, it's like that seems kind of dumb. I mean, depending on where you where you live, it's like they're almost like squeezing out small business. I mean, if you live in a good state that cares about its business, like Texas, Florida, and all that, then uh, you'll you'll be fine. <laughs> Let's see. I can only work with people who who will um, comprise me, me in the middle or nothing. We're talking hierarchy. Well, yeah, there's there's a hierarchy there. For sure. For sure. Okay. So that's just a little appetizer. That that little question's pretty pretty silly. I find that really silly cuz it's like, come on. Uh that the hypothetical it's pretty goofy, and it's totally unrealistic. But what I want to get into here is this. If I put it on the screen. There we go. There we go. All right. And, then of course, I do see that the chat's kind of like over the... Uh, the little TV thing will be fixed at. My eye, my eye probably looks really bad. I don't know how long this could be like this. My neighbors would give me shit. <laughs> and rightly so. It wasn't a full bottle of Jameson. It was about like this much. Down. I like pretty much chugged in like big gulps out of cup, just a, what I call my patriotic cup, f poured it and just, just kept on. Oh God. Okay. So what we're about to play here is kind of a, a leaked audio from the, the lecture or a speech <laughs> presented by, uh, or given by Aruna K Kilanani. K Kilanani. You probably heard about this already. It's the uh, psychiatrist, psychoanalysis that had a pretty crazy take about what you want to do with white people. Shoot them in the head with a revolver just because they piss her off so much. I don't know. Probably not a good... Probably not a good way to go about uh, tackling racism by, you know, saying that first that all white people are racist, two that uh, you want to shoot white people, and three that uh, you know just just a collective mentality, just grouping everybody and, and and like race is like a like just a collective unconsciousness. Like there's like everyone represents a, a, like one person represents all or something. It's crazy. Really oversimplifying the whole whole issue. Uh, let's see. We probably won't play all this. But we'll play a good chunk of it. Now, we'll say the audio is pretty bad. There's subtitles here. This is on... Um, what was this channel called? I Hypocrite. 
So he he did subtitles so that way we could kind of read it and go along. All right. Here we go. Okay, so in this uh, little talk we're going to get, the speech, the learning objectives at the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to set up white people's absence of empathy towards black rage as a problem. Okay. Set up white people's absence of empathy towards black rage as a problem. Now, let me guys ask you this. Has there been a lot of absence of empathy from white people towards black rage? I haven't seen it. I don't know what she's talking about. In fact, last year and this year, I see a lot of white people that are like, we get it. You are upset. That's why things are burning down. That's why you guys are still, still, you know, rioting and are protested peace. Okay. Yeah. I see a lot of people. The other thing we're going to learn here is understand how racism is part of the mind, that white mind. What part of the mind, that white mind that arose during colonialism with a series of lies around violence? What? So racism is all part of the white mind, the colonialism. It's, that's interesting. Hmm. So racism is just a white thing, just a product of the white mind. So, I mean, no other race is racist? And colonialism? I mean, it's not like there weren't any other... Um, yeah, so Europeans and Spaniards are pretty good at conquest, exploring and conquest. Sure, yeah, happened quite a bit. Who else was pretty good? I mean... The, the Arab countries were always fighting. They're trying to conquer each other. Oh, even the natives of America were, were fighting each other. The tribes were at war over land, over property. <laughs> you know, uh, it's like, okay. Mm. Oh, Genghis Khan. Oh, yeah, we can't forget about him. Yeah, he he definitely was a white. He was definitely a conqueror. <laughs> just about all of us have a little bit of Genghis in us. Just just a little bit. Okay, just making sure make sure the blood's not coming out of the eye. That'd be really bad. <laughs> anyway. Oh, and understand how white people are psychologically dependent on black rage. Uh, guys, are y'all any any white guys watching? Are you are you psychologically dependent on black rage? I don't know about you, but I am. Oh, what's this? Needs assessment. Everyone is talking about race right now, especially white people, and yet white people seem to be losing it. The number of Karen and it's my right to not wear a mask videos are exploding. How do we understand that psychologically? Uh, okay. So it just seems like this whole lecture, this whole speech is going to be crazy. We'll see. I'll skip ahead. Oh, there we go. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just to maybe touch points on a couple of things like before we get started. Like I said, the audio is horrible, all right? The audio is atrocious. Um, oh, what? this chick is I Iranian, too. <laughs> There's that. She's Iranian. Uh, she's not black, but she will talk as if she is uh, a, a black person. So that is that is very interesting. Uh, this is a rabbit hole to perpetual division, strife and conflict. Nothing new here. Want to hear something different, or just keep this dysfunctional path going? 
Well, I, I, but the critical race theory stuff, it seems like all it is, its purpose is to divide, further divide. Um, and, and, and lectures like this, this woman gave, it's not helping, not helping at all. Yeah. This has probably been a, everyone talks about the, the work on race, like what is the work on race? And there's, Wait, what is the, there's often a lot of talking, but the real work is actually emotional. And in a department of psychiatry, I think that we already know that if you can process negative feelings or if you have access to your aggression, you're actually psychologically healthier. Okay. And at the same time, I want us to begin to think of racism as action. So I'm going to say a lot of things, and it will probably provoke a lot of responses. And I want you to just maybe observe them in yourself. Are you having moral responses to what I'm saying? Is it a thought? Is it a feeling? Is it an action? How does this relate to race? Um, so that's it. Let's get started. Um, first up, like, prayers up for DMS, who's like, in the hospital right now. So let's show a prayer for him. And I'm okay. also going to invoke a Sanskrit prayer, which is Nahimyanam Sadrisham. And that means in this word, there's no. So she's also Hindu. Position equivalent to knowledge. So if racism exists in all aspects of our world, it also exists within our collective psychology. Okay, so this racism exists in our collective psychology. Collective psychology, first off, uh, that's a weird thing to talk about. Collective psychology, the collective, the collective consciousness, the psychology of the collective. That's, I mean, everyone can be racist. Everyone can be bigoted towards all sorts of people for various reasons. I mean, it doesn't take much. Uh, and it, Okay, I'm curious what else she has to say about this. Everyone talks about systemic racism, but what does that mean? It means that it exists within our collective psychology, which means that culture is essentially white. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that's where she lost me. So she talked about the collective psychology and racism in the collective psychology, but somehow what that means is that culture is essentially white. It reflects a white mind. Culture what? Culture in America? What are you talking about? The culture in Japan is most definitely not a white thing. Is it? I mean, first off, I really do not like it when these people start talking like, about race like this because it, it, it it's very divisive. It just, and, and it further, like it, it pins us against each other. It does. It's a, and it's also a really dumb, a dumb point, which means a culture is essentially white. Um, no, first off, you, you mentioned DMX in the beginning, the culture of rap, but then it come from white people that, that came from, that came from black people. And that's fine. That's fine. You know, what do you mean culture is essentially white? Especially, man, I live in Texas, Houston, Texas. If anything, that's like a fusion of like Hispanic culture, India culture, uh, Vietnamese. Oh, a lot of Vietnamese. Um, it's not like, I don't know what she even means by this. That culture is essentially white. I can't, I don't even understand it. It doesn't make any sense. It seems really bigoted and narrow-minded. I don't understand how you could just say that culture is white. What? Am I wrong there? You following? I'm sure you are. Uh, man, I'm just thinking of music right now. Like, how did how did blues start, huh? How did blues start? Was a white man who who who, who uh, played the first blues song, or was it a person of color? Hmm. What about rock? What about when they started uh, getting distorted and stuff like that? I, I heard, I remember that was like an accident too. I need to refresh my history on that. It's kind of like they weren't trying to do it, 
but it happened. And it sounded cool, so they kept on doing it. Man, I swear, culture is essentially white. I'm still triggered by this, if you will. Um, I mean, even rock, I'm thinking like Jimi Hendrix. You, he, that motherfucker's not white. And I'm thinking, thinking blues, like B.B. King. Like, that motherfucker ain't white. B.B. King's good. So is, uh, so is Jimi Hendrix. Anyway. <laughs> it reflects the white mind. There is a psychological dynamic that is on PTSD repeat every time people of color... There is a psychological dynamic that is on PTSD repeat every time a person of color attempts to directly talk to white people about race. First off, um, like, I have black friends, and I don't, like, the conversation of race? Like, why... That might come up like a joke every now and then, but it's not like being serious about it. I mean, like, what do you talk about? Like, <laughs> because that conversation can get pretty hairy very fast over things that happened in the past, things that I have nothing to do with, you know, things that my maybe my ancestors did. Okay. All right. Um, which, I mean, we could talk about, but it's not going to change anything. We could talk about it. Fine. Fine. Sure. Um, but at the same time, what we could also do is, uh, you know, talk about other shit. Damn. Attempt to directly talk to white people about race. The double bind of even bothering to talk at all. An eerie feeling that's familiar of intense rage and futility. But, so, okay, let me let her continue. This sounds crazy. We spend our time patiently explaining their attacks as they deny it. We are calm. We are giving, too giving. And then when we get angry, they use our responses as confirmation. Uh, what's going on, uh, dear guy? Your reaction reveals how this approach perpetuates division, strife, and conflict. Maybe sometime you will be interested in alternative, maybe. Uh, what's what's your um, what's your alternative? What 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 is your alternative, uh, Dirty Guy? I'm curious. Because my my problem with this is that what she's saying doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and it sounds really racist so far, and. Um, Like, I have a, no, I do have a problem with the stuff that she's saying here. That we're crazy or have emotional problems. Simply put, I advocate mutual respect through uh, personal empowerment. With inclusive incorporation, refusing coercion. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, personal empowerment? I mean, like, people take charge of, the, of, of their own lives and empower themselves? I mean, that would be good. I mean, that sounds a hell of a lot better than what CRT is doing. CRT is kind of like, you know, like you take the classroom. You kind of like, you're, you're kind of separating by race. And you're being like, okay, um, based on the color of your skin, you are oppressed and you are the oppressor. Um, and it's, it's really, it's going to be difficult for you to achieve, um, to achieve much. Because that that kid over there is holding you down, is oppressing you. Like that's that's not. I don't see how that teaches, like working together. To me, that it seems like it's just sowing, sowing more bullshit and hatred. In the meantime, there's there's families that are teaching their kids that you know, you don't you don't need to like see color like that like um what, what's what's more important besides color what's way more important than color is like someone's character are they nice I mean, how do they how do they present themselves are they nice to you are they mean to you uh if they're mean to you were they having a bad day uh you know was it like a one-off one-off thing or is there a reason why they acted that way you know it's just content of character is very important 
problem. It always ends that way. It happens every time like a goddamn timer. We just count it down. White people's expectation is that we need to take their attacks with gratitude. White people's expectation is that we need to take their attacks with gratitude? What? And apologize for our anger? I don't even know what she's talking about. White people's... that I hate the way she's phrasing it, too. Like, it's just a collective. Like, as of all white people. Like, like that terminology, the way she's wording this. Like, how? What? Because pretty much all she's saying, like, all white people, their expectation... As I guess people of color uh, need to take their attacks with gratitude. Mm. That's not what I saw. That's not what I've been seeing. In fact, if anything, there's many, many white people that will fight with black people for certain things, for certain issues. I mean, damn it. I mean, this is kind of like making it seem like all white people are like racist or whatever and just like take, just take my attack. This is stupid shit. And apologize for our anger. And now we're overly sensitive and crazy. Our rage is the real problem. Except nothing makes me angrier than a white person who tells me to not be angry because they have not seen real anger yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's the truth. Except nothing makes me angrier than a white person who tells me to not be angry. Well, everyone, I think, can agree here just about, maybe. You know, I'm, I'm collecting everybody in a group, and there's always exceptions. But most people from, I don't know, maybe some people, I should say, uh, they don't like it when they're told not to be angry. Like, when you tell someone to calm down and they're angry, that doesn't work, right? Try telling your wife that, your girlfriend that. They're not going to calm down. They're going to just... You know, uh, usually when someone's angry, you, you just, you don't tell them to calm down. Maybe you can get into it, what they're angry about and kind of help them get it out so that they calm, so that they do end up calming down because they got it out of their system. I did this for years in the psychoanalysis where every time I got angry around race, this white bitch called me psychotic. She told me- well, I mean, if she's if she's doing this group stuff, like this collective psychology based on race, then yeah, she is pretty psychotic. That's a problem. Was that I was quote too smart, and that I either have to be psychic or stupid. Because if I was psychic, her interpretations had nothing to do with me. Psychoanalysis was used on the, as a weapon on me to have aspects of her mind. Wait, wait, wait. So this Dr. Kilanani, who is also a psychiatrist and a psychologist, whatever. Uh, so she's saying like psychiatry was used against her <laughs> as a weapon. All right. All right. I'm very curious about this woman. I think she might be a little, a little loco. A projection which I'll unpack. She'd attack me through racist interpretation and then make my anger quote the she take me from a racist interpretations. Well, I don't know if you say all white people are this and that. It's kind of it kind of silly. It's it's pretty racist. I mean, you know, it's racist when if you take out the word white and you use it like you know, put in sort of black or Hispanic or whatever. It sounds pretty racist. But whatever. And I mean, she's she's not even black. She's Iranian. I mean. But whatever. A problem. I spent years unpacking her racism to her while she charged me cash money for years. And then she'd attempt to, quote, teach me because she had concern about my anger. I couldn't get it. So she was seeing a psychiatrist. And I mean, that's what a psychiatrist do. They, they talk to you. <laughs> and she was getting angry because the psychiatrist would ask her questions about why she's getting angry. That's her job. Her job is to tell you... Uh, I ask you questions about why are you angry and what are some ways you, you could, you could, I don't know, channel the anger or what were some coping skills? What are things that help you calm down? Those are all perfect, 
things for psychiatrists or psychologists, a, a therapist to bring up in therapy. Have you have you guys ever been to therapy? Look at me. You know for damn sure I've been to therapy before. Okay. Uh, I can tell you from experience. They ask questions. This is the cost of talking to white people at all. This is the cost of talking to white people at all. Like all together? All, oh my God, that sounds... Cost of your own life is a stuffy dry. There are no good apples out there. Dude, this sentence right here, or these three sentences, imagine if you took out white and replaced it with something else. Like, like Jews? Like Mexicans? Arabs? I mean, it sounds really toxic, what she's saying. And this was at a university, man. Um, this was at a university. And from what I understand, Yale wanted to bury this. Which she wanted out there. This this doctor wanted it out there. Um, yeah, so that's crazy to me. This is the she's. I'm quoting what she's saying here. She's saying this is the cost of talking to white people at all. The cost of your own life as a sucky dry. There are no good apples out there. No good apples in the bunch. All rotten. Wow. Um. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. make my blood boil. Okay. Around five years ago, I took some action. I systemically, systematically, I'm going to do. Like ghosts did, most of my white friends. Like ghosts of most of my white friends. I got rid of a couple of white B-I-P-O-C? What is, what is that? She's, she's Iranian. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I think... I know she's not black, though, um, but like goes to most of my white friends. OK, and I got rid of a couple of people of white B.I.P.O.C. What does that mean? Um, like they're like biracial. Like biracial indigenous people of color. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> they're like speaking code here. Okay. And I got rid of a couple white BIPOCs that snuck in my throat, too. BIPOC. I stopped watching the news. Once I started, I couldn't stop. I had less than 1% left. It was also public service. I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, daring their body. Wow. Once again, guys, I remind you, this was at Yale University for, uh, it was... A lecture or a, a speech given at the Child Study Center. I don't understand how what this has to do with children or studying the psychology of children. Um, I you know speaking of that, so she has fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way and burying their body. Well, at least at least she would bury you. I mean, would she bury you in your backyard? At the graveyard, the cemetery. I mean, where was she? Where's she gonna bury you at? Like, she's gonna go to Nevada, and bury you out there. I, I don't think she could dig a hole. <laughs> and wiping my bloody hands as I walked away, relatively gentle. Oh, and she's happy about it. She's happy about this fantasy. Uh, okay. Well, guys, imagine if she said this about any other race. Imagine if she if she said uh she imagine if Kilinani said that Kilinani fantasized about unloading a revolver at a black person's head. I mean, come on. Oh, God. That's what about my sex? Like I did the world a fucking favor. I did the world a fucking favor. We're talking, man, this is this is like Hitler levels. It is. This is like Nazi levels. This is like the sort of shit they would teach like the uh, Hitler youth about the Jews. Very much in line.
And she says she stopped watching the news. Maybe that's her problem because things have been like, there's a whole bunch of white people that are, well, what they support black lives matter. There's a bunch of white people that, um, like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, there's many people, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, that interact and get along just fine. Get along just fine. <sighs> Jesus Christ. All indoctrination starts with children? That's right. Oh, what happened to... uh? Oh, what about Dirty Guy? Well, that's sad. I also walked away from this. I understand the optics of talking about critical race theory, but, um, you know, I'm not a racist here. My wife is Hispanic. I got uh, half Hispanic, half white kids. Um, for the longest time, I had yellow fever, you know, I still do to this day. Uh, shoot. And, um, yeah, I, I got. I know it's so cliche to say, I got black friends. <laughs> the truth is where I spent years training in New York. I didn't want to teach there. I couldn't be a part of it. They are militarized training systems and how to become white. What? What? They are militarized training system and to how to become white? What is she talking about? I also walked away from institutions where I spent years training in the I couldn't be a in the OR operating room. Like at the, in the in a hospital, so she could be part of it because they are militarized training systems and how to become white, dude. All right, I don't understand that. Explain that to me. What what is the militarized training system? Part of it. They are militarized training systems and how to become white. And what does it mean to become white? What does that even fucking mean? I don't even know what that means. I mean. Guys, like, what, what, what does that mean? Like, uh, shit. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of any militarized training system in my lifetime or, you know, growing up in sc My school was pretty shitty for everybody. Hmm. But there was that one class where we all had to give, uh, Sig Hiles and... That teacher didn't last long, though. Hmm. Hmm. The Ivies are papers, after all. So let's step it up, yeah. I needed to cut out everything white. I needed to time out everything white. So what does that... What does everything white mean? Like, no, no mayonnaise on a sandwich? A, a tuna sandwich? A, like, honestly, things are kind of mixed where I'm at with what I eat and like even the food. Like, what, what, is, what is a white person food? Like hamburgers and fries? Pizza? I mean, that's like... I mean... I, I don't... Like, pop music? She doesn't listen to Taylor Swift? I don't, I don't understand. I don't get this. I, I don't understand what she means. I need to time out everything white. Well, good thing for a psychiatrist. My lethal calmly cleanse was a moment of... My, my lethal communal cleanse was a moment of reckoning with myself. Reckoning with myself. I didn't let myself see that I've been having these conversations for years. It was too painful for me to acknowledge that I was being raped. <coughs> well, it was too painful for me to acknowledge that I was being raped? By who? Who who was doing the raping? What is she talking about? This chick is bonkers. To see the relationship for what they really were. Attack entitlement. Holding them above the Connery dungeon, I released them into the pit. I was sparking motherfucking joy. In my own private practice, however, I had the opposite feeling with my white patients. Oh my god, she had white patients? Uh if you are one of her patients, you and you're white, uh, no, don't don't go to her because she don't like you. 
Uh, she thinks all white people are uh, a problem. They're they're all rotten. I guess to the core. No no good apples in the bunch. <laughs> oh my god. I felt unbearable pain sitting with them and feeling what they were going through. White suffering is desperately painful. White suffering is desperately painful. Um, like, what does she mean by that? Like, like the suffering that a white person goes through is like they're it's painful, but it's like they're trying too hard to make it painful. Like, it sounds like a song from like. Like lyrics from Lincoln Park where they sing about family issues, sing about you know, the dad treating them wrong, mom not being the in the picture anymore. <laughs> maybe, maybe the mom's whipping them. But that's not just a white person thing. What? What? I don't I don't even I don't understand this. White suffering is desperately painful. I think what she's trying to say is that white people are just faking or exaggerating their pain. They don't have any problems. I don't know, man. Uh, there's plenty of trailer parks in my area, and uh, they have lots of problems. Lots of problems. I, it, Jesus. Even if white people don't know that the origin of their suffering is racism. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure to tell the white people I, I interact with that... Um, it had like family abuse <laughs> that suffer from like alcohol abuse or suffer from all sorts of issues. I'll just tell, I'll let, let them know that really what's causing their suffering. It's just racism. It's not the racist. <laughs> That's why my dad beat me when I was a kid because my dad was racist at me for being white. He was like, son, I'm gonna get the whiteness out of you. This doesn't make any sense. This is stupid shit. And she has a fucking degree. Okay. And she has a practice. And she teaches people. Nonsense. Freaking clown show. They've never learned another way. I've been able to take in a few births now. And I want to put into words why conversation was never possible. To communicate to you what I thought was impossible. My fantasies of being an assassin were more about my own futility. I was not doing what I needed to do. A meditation on the real murder. Whoa. Okay. So so the fantasy was just a fantasy, but what she needed to do was meditation on the real murder? Uh, okay, this sentence looks crazy. I just wanted to look into my own darkness, mix my blood and tears with my finger, and smear it across my forehead. Like, like she cut herself? I, I don't, I don't know if this, if this chick is in the position to be offering psychiatry help to anybody. I, I, I don't. I don't think she is. I didn't want to look into my own darkness, mix my blood and tears with my finger, and smear it across my forehead as look. I was scared of my own power and thrill of invoking terror. So she wants to be a terrorist. Hmm. So I thought myself. In Hindu culture, Mahishakura is a demon that changes. Something about a chakra, chakra. Man. I gotta tell you something. The chakra stuff. I don't. I don't believe in, in any of that. I don't. A lot. A lot of that spiritual stuff. I. There was a time where I wanted to believe. And I tried to. It's just. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Every time I told my chakra, a chakra, a chakra. This chakra that. Okay. Every time we kill a chakra, it stays immortal by. Taking a new shape and form. What is she? You know, when I was when I was in the psych program at uh, UHCL, uh, there was someone talking about chakras and spiritual stuff, and I was like, um, "Where's where's like 
the research to back this stuff up. And um, they'll, they'll get like these psych journals that are kind of bullshit. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain more of that more about that later, a later stream, I guess, maybe. More. It just my takeaway on that. My thoughts on this is it's goofy. Like that sort of like nonsense sort of bullshit thinking. I mean, it's kind of spiritual thinking. All right. But it, 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 combine that with the racist attitude or attitudes towards, I guess, all white people or whatever. Uh, I don't know. And the way she talks about how she wants to smear her blood with her tears and on her forehead. I don't think she's stable, man. I, I just don't see it. I'm taking a new shape and form. My thoughts that I can only be destroyed when you see it for what it is. It can no longer take another form. Racism is my money shot for So she wants to destroy racism. I arrived from a goddess culture that chose to create, and I'm also like really good with knives. I arrived from a goddess culture that kills to create. Um, this is like a manifesto. All right. This is like stuff you would hear or read from uh, someone who had shot up some people, killed some people. I don't know. So I'm going to do what I need to do, which is kill my Sasuna and enjoy it. I took a minute. I'm ready to come out and let the killing and creation begin. Adi Parashakti is the moment of absolute truth after the destruction of the universe. Are they sure this was a speech? A lecture? Or was this, like, where is this chick now? Is she not planning something? This stuff sounds crazy. And before its creation. We're going to have to destroy everything to create a new world. Well, there, there, there you have, like, what critical race theory is about. <laughs> what this chick is about. You got to destroy everything to create a new world. All right. All right. Have fun with that. I know Dave Chappelle's done. <laughs> okay. I know Dave Chappelle's done new material, but I want to return to his special, 846. I hit pause in two moments in Chappelle's 846, the opening and closing question. I'm tired of explaining to these people something that is so goddamn obvious, and are you out of your fucking mind if you can't see that? I held on to every word Chappelle said. The space between his words felt long, emotionally raw. The nightmare of racism hasn't ended, it's endured, thrived. We've never been able to move forward. Why are white people so confused by black rage? More importantly, why do white people have so little empathy towards black rage? Um, I'm not seeing that at all. I see that a lot of people have empathy towards black rage. A lot of white people do. Okay. Now, of course, I'm probably one of the white people that you might put in a group that was like, I understand they're angry, but like, you know, burning down their own community doesn't seem like a smart idea. I did. I was pretty vocal about that. Maybe you were too. Maybe you weren't. I don't know. But I was just like, I understand you're upset, but you burn down your own community. Maybe not so, maybe not a good idea uh, because, you know, those businesses are probably not going to want to do business in that area anymore. It's just is what it is. Whatever. In 846, Chappelle begged white women to just shut up. <sighs> white women to just shut up. And I'm looking at Dr. Aruna Kilanani, who um, is definitely not black. She's Iranian. And how, how, um, Like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this one. I mean, what's ethnically like? What what are Iranians? I mean, but I'm I'm just curious. White women cannot stop talking for longer than five minutes because they think that they are here to teach us about white privilege. And well, okay. We're listening to you talk about white, white privilege. And I saw the same type of thinking in all white people in the institutions I was at. But now I got some tools. So let's just say I got a roadmap for the white mind. A roadmap for the white mind. Um, hold on, let me take this off the screen real fast. I, I'm curious about something here. 
I want to look up. She is white. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm. I'm curious about the the people of Iran. Like, what where, where, where did they descend from? And okay. She's white, but she definitely has like a, a, a unibrow thing going on. <laughs> uh, there's that. Persian. Iranian or Persian. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah, most of the population's Persian. Majority of the population. All right. So definitely not black. <laughs> definitely not black. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe Dave. Maybe she should uh, take a lesson from Dave Chappelle on that. I just you could Google. This chick, like her, her, she's, I don't find her attractive at all, Are you out of your but that's just, it doesn't mean anything. It, it's the, it's the, it's the eyebrows. They're, and the nose is really long. The fucking mind if you can't see that. I asked the exact same question to my first federal analyst. The mentioned what bitch. It Damn, she's, she's talking mean about her psychoanalysis, man. I think she needs to go back to therapy. It wasn't well received. I knew it wouldn't be. I'm psychic like that. <laughs> Since racism is embedded in culture, it's normal in our society to attack the minds of black and brown people. Um, to say that we're crazy or our rage is a problem. This perception is authorized by academic psychiatry. Uh, I don't... What does she know about, like, the black pain... The black rage. What does she know about that? Because she, she's not black. I I think she wants to be black. In psychology, because they are part of the collective white mind. That shit is white as fuck. I'm going to answer Wait, back back. Is What is white as fuck? Academic psychology. The perception is authorized by academic psychiatry and psychology because they're a part of the collective white mind. What perception? To say that we're crazy or that our rage is a problem? Okay, I don't even know what... This perception is authorized by academic psychiatry and psychology because they are part of a collective white mind. To say we're crazy or that our rage is a problem. Um, well, maybe, you know what? Maybe her rage is a problem. I, from what I gathered so far, Killa, Killa Lani, Killa Lamani, uh, has a rage problem, has an anger issue. If she's fantasizing about killing people and want to smear blood on her forehead and whatever, uh, I think maybe she should, should have listened to her psych, you know, psychologist, psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever, and... Yeah, explore her anger because she has a lot of deep-seated hatred and anger burning inside. And she took that criticism and just applied it to all people of color. No, your, your therapist was talking about you, Kilanani. You, you have a rage issue. This book. I'm going to answer some questions in a series of pieces through a different angle. I'll be using my expertise in forensic psychiatry critical theory, and psychoanalysis to turn the lens on the problem, the white mind. The white mind. So she's talking about her own mind. This piece is the intro of pieces to come, which will dig deeper. The series is intended to unpack the hot mess of the white mind. You will likely have a problem with what I'm saying. Could you try again? Huh. She needs to shut off Siri. scary. Anyway. Um... Interesting question. All right. <laughs> Let's turn the volume on this down. I'm so curious. I gotta say, yeah, the, the audio quality is horrible. Remember that. 
This is on a, a Zoom meeting. Fine, Anna. Did you still tell them the plan? It's part of my scheme. You know, I have a problem with what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. That the way I'm talking about race is, quote, not acceptable to you. These racist restrictions are code for ways of, of speaking and writing. The racist restrictions are code for ways for, of speaking and, and writing? Wait, these racist restrictions are code for ways... What, 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 you'll likely have a problem with what I'm going to say or how I'm going to say it. You might think of talking about race as a quote, not acceptable to you. Okay. You only need to categorize my writing and the style in which I speak is the dynamic of racism. If my use of the word bitch was too much for you, what I'm saying will threaten you. You need to believe that white people are the real victims. Your race will threaten you. You need to believe that white people are the real victims. Okay. So right here so far, she's saying, look, I'm going to be crude. I'm going to be crass. If I say bitch, if I say fuck, if that's too much for you, uh, then then you have the problem. You need to listen to me. And the reason why you don't want to listen to me is because you believe, you want to believe, you need to believe that you are the victim, Whitey. I mean, that's what this comes off as. Your racism is going to come alive towards me because I'm directly talking about race. And that's uncomfortable. You want to box me in to define me so that... Yeah, I'm, I think you should be boxed in. Maybe um, for about a week or two for for some treatment, mental health treatment, okay? I'm unacceptable and not the ever-shifting forms of racism. My pieces are an objective expose on racism. I'm going to rip and banter through my memoirs as I slowly run a blade across your neck. Look how violent she is on just the way she talks. My pieces are an objective ex expose on racism. I'm going to rip some banter through my memoirs as I slowly run a blade across your neck. What? Why? You know... These, there's a pattern with the way she describes things and says things, kind of like she has a homicidal mind. I'm just saying, bro. Are you picking it up? I'm picking it up. These pieces are an intimate look into my complicated relationship with myself, dealing with white, my problems with my profession, and the world at large. I will lay out how racism pervades all parts of my life as I settle the score. <laughs> John C., I came for baby metal, save for critical race theory. Well, I figured talking about this, yeah, some people are going to be like, hmm, you know, this guy talks about what now? And it may leave. It may leave. <laughs> I knew doing this may do that. Uh, which sad. If they leave, it'd be like, well, I don't, I don't really think they know me. But anyway, uh, nothing is more intimate than death. So we're going to get a little close. We're going to have a little fun. She's like Wednesday Adams, man. She's like a little homicidal girl. Nothing is more intimate than death. So we're going to get a little fun, and I'm going to have a little fun. You may have heard of words such as psychopath and bully. Or like me, you'd be more partial to the more sort of accurate descriptors of asshole and bitch. Psychopath and bully. Yeah, I've heard those terms before. They're not interchangeable. And there's a psychopath, but a psychopath doesn't have to be a bully. Um, uh, or like me, the more... Partial for, uh, to the more accurate descriptor, affluent bitch. Affluent bitch is like a mean girl? Not really like a psychopath. I mean... None of these words come even close to capturing the pervasive white people are truly a phenomenon. This means that we need a brand new book. There was like a disconnect there. Vocabulary for these concepts to imagine something new. An experiential remix that draws from culture, psychoanalysis, and forensics. I have created a psychological mashup guide to the violence that white people commit as part of their identity and their need to stay guilty. Wait, well, what? Okay, guys, we have a mashup guide coming up to the violence that white people commit as a part of their identity and need to stay guilty. Uh, 
I don't know what violence they're talking about that white people commit as part of their identity. Talking about like police violence. Is that is that what they're talking about? Like police shooting unarmed black people, or I guess now it doesn't matter if they armed or not. They could be armed and have a gun ready to to use. They get shot, and there's people still riot. Um. Okay, and they need to stay guilty. Do are white people trying to stay guilty? Or are they trying to get rid of their white guilt? I thought white people were trying to get rid of their white guilt. Hmm. I don't know. To not face some awful truth. We need a vocabulary of new concepts to help people of color name what they experience, to identify the violence that's committed on them, to and to reflect on the parts they may have also internalized. All right. I'll unpack how racism is embedded in white culture. Uh, racism is embedded in white culture and how it reflects the collective and white mind. And how it reflects the collective white mind. Racism hides behind a distorted white focus on black rage as a problem that black and brown people need to address. Sounds like Biden when Biden was referring to super predators. <laughs> you know? Okay. Without seeing it as a projection of their own sickness. Racism is masked by white efforts to help people of color. Racism is masked. I, I, I hate the audio, man. The audio for this. I could just not do the audio and just literally just read this stuff. Color. An identity I will call white goodness. So there's white goodness. Racism is masked by white efforts to help POC and identify I call white goodness. So even if you're nice to someone of color, it's still racism? Or you're just masking your racism? So white goodness is just masking racism. So if there's a black person in the store and you worked at that store and you try to help them out, that's a good act. Are you are you masking your racism? Are you trying to just be a good person to help them out? Are you just trying to do your job and help them out? What if you open a door for a, for a black woman that's behind you? Are you being nice and generous? Are 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 you just masking your racism? Not everything is racist, man. <laughs> I swear, it's like her 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 logic here is that. All white people are racist. It's bad and deep inside, and there's nothing they can do about it. It's like original sin shit. It's like, what, what do you mean there's nothing you could do about it? What do you mean we're all racist? What do you mean we have this, we all have this cross to bear called racism, and that we're all, I don't know, guilty of it? By what? Where's the, where, where's the academic uh, studies on this shit? Where's the research papers behind this stuff? Because of this dynamic of white people never owning their shit. White people own their shit all the fucking time. How many videos have you seen where a white person will apologize for saying something that was offensive? They they apologize for it. But even though they apologize, the, the apology is not good enough. It's not enough. And instead of them continuing to have a job or whatever, have a way to feed their family. They're just, I don't know, done. They're done with. <sighs> Black and brown people have always had a different room to talk about white people. For white people, my series is an invitation into the other room to see how we view you and to begin to own your own violence. But it's your first time here, so I want to make sure that you're, like, comfortable or at least seated. Like, I'm a good host like that. But you're here. I respect that. My thoughts are clearly an integration of, like, way too many years in school. And during that time, I had to play anthropologist to white academics to survive and understand what the fuck they are really saying. So I've learned how to decode white. I will be teaching these new concepts to you, but my form is just a candid conversation. What I'm talking about is really emotionally painful. But at All the same right. time, sometimes we just need a little laughter. We need a little sugar to bear the milk. Let's kick it. All right, let's White kick people it. have been out of their minds. White people have been out of their minds? Since Western colonialism. It was the worst violence the world has ever seen. 
The worst violence the world has ever seen was white colonialism. That's what she's saying. I mean, the Spaniards were pretty rough. The conquistadors were pretty rough. Yeah, sure. True. Oh, man. And yeah. Uh, wait, wait. A lot of that violence, too, was also on other white people as well. Um, who else were really violent, too? I don't know. Like I said before, there's Genghis Khan. I mean, he was really violent. <laughs> I mean, but I guess I guess that doesn't matter. I mean, ask China about that. <laughs> um, worst violence the world has ever seen. No, no. I mean, talk about like the major wars. Yeah. Okay. But what what were those wars like? World War Two. Yeah, a bunch of. Mostly white countries fighting. Um, you had, well, no, you had, you had Japan. Okay. And then you had, um, you know, the blacks that were enlisted in, into the, in the U.S. Army. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Man. Shit, and America had a civil war over slavery, essentially. States' rights, slavery. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. I'm just saying about this, what she said. One of the bloodiest Amer American wars was over slavery, and the, the, the slaves were freed. It was a step in the right direction, but whatever, <laughs> you know. God damn it. Wait, wait, wait. What what about <laughs> the what about isms? Um, what about the ethnic cleansing and the genocide committed by other countries like China, Russia? You know, th those are interesting. They're pretty bloody. What you will tell themselves that they are the superheroes of the world? They well, America does, but you know. Lie to justify their violence. So, if she were to say that America sees itself as the, the superhero of the world, I would I'd be like, okay, you're right. We we did, but I think that sort of that has sort of fallen now. Like that ship has sailed. I think. I'm gonna call the superhero identity white goodness. It is the mask of a psychopath. White people don't know they are wearing a mask because usually psychopaths don't know that they're psychopaths. This mask is an essential part of their identity. Every time a person, a white person lies about their violence to or against a person of color, they invert reality. The violence... Oh, so you can't even counter this. You can't even question this. If you were to do that, you're just inverting the reality. That's all you're doing. Huh. You can't question this. That's, that's not good. ...becomes exceptional heroism. White people also have to distort the perception of a person of color to make them inferior and in need of help to justify violence. What do you, need of help to justify violence? What, what, what does she t Reference, citation needed. Like, what do you tell you? White people also have to disturb their perception of a person of color to make them inferior in need of help to justify violence. Okay. Like what? Need to see them as inferior and and that they need help to justify the violence. What's she talking about, guys? What's she talking about? Is is the violence like food stamps and Medicaid, welfare? Is that the violence? Is that it? Because that's, that's, I mean, that's what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what she's talking about. I'm trying to make sense of it. Is it like when America go, gets involved in Middle East conflicts because uh, they need her help? Well, that's bullshit anyway. I agree. I would agree with her on that. That's bullshit. Our troops shouldn't, don't need to be over there. But money has to be made, right? Hmm. A lot of, a lot of interest when it makes some money.
Anyway. And for white people, everyone was in need of their help, which is like how to them began. Um, no, people didn't explore new lands to colonize because they thought people needed their help. They were, they were exploring new lands because they could. They had ships. They set sail. They saw new territory. Oh, we've never been here before. Let's check it out. Um, there are some people on this land. Okay. How are they? What do they do? Let's explore them. Oh, they're weak. They have resources. We want those resources. We're going to take those resources. We're going to take that stuff. Yeah, that that did happen. And that's not just a white thing. That's a human thing. The, the tribes are doing that to each other. You had the, the, the Mongols and China fighting. You had, I don't know, what are some um, Arab um, Middle Eastern clans that are fighting? I mean, shit, you got, you got a bunch of conflicts all over the place. Yeah, the Moors in Spain. <laughs> I mean, it's you had conflicts throughout, man. Hmm. So now, what kind of violently inverted reality for years to continue to see themselves as the world superheroes? It's grand management at the point. So white people are out of their minds, and they have been for a long time. So we're not in a psychological predicament because when people feel that we are bullying them when we bring up race. No, I don't, I don't, I don't feel bullied about the race thing. Do you guys feel bullied? They feel that we should be thanking them for all that they have done for us. They are confused. She says us. She says us as of including herself. She's Persian. Okay. Um, and she comes from a wealthy family. Uh, I did. I, I understand that. I did explore that. Um, highly educated. Well, she has the, the she has the degrees. She's still homicidal, a little crazy. Um, <laughs> she's not. She's not black. I don't. And, and person of color. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. <laughs> Okay? Like everything she's saying is the way it's framed, the way she's talking about it is super divisive. Like, how's this supposed to help anybody? How's this supposed to help? Uh, we're going to talk about the psychopathic problem of the white mind. What, um, like, I guess all white people are like American psychos type of. <laughs> I, 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 this sounds crazy. We keep forgetting that directly talking about race is a waste of our breath. We are asking a demented, violent predator who thinks that they're a saint or a superhero to accept responsibility. It ain't gonna happen. They have five holes in their brains. What? We got five holes in our brains? Dude, if you're white, did you know you got five holes in your brains? What is she talking? This girl, this woman is batshit insane. Five holes? Were they speed holes? What do you mean five holes in the brain? It's like banging your head against a brick wall. It's just like not a good idea. You know what's not a good idea? Listening to this chick and taking her advice. Seriously. If this is your doctor, uh, you need to change that like immediately. I'm not going to finish all this. This is enough for me. Um, this is insane. It's like listening to the ramblings of a crazy person. There's nonsense here. You got five holes in the brain? Show me, show me on the diagram. What are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? It makes no sense, man. This is bullshit. And this is at a university. Man. These, these universities are a joke. They're a fucking joke now. Yeah, I'm gonna tell my 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 kids to go into a trade school. Fuck that. Even my daughter, she wants she wants to make a a living, a work a good job. Trade school. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up here, guys. This this is infuriating. This is just this fucking crazy train, man. <laughs> the the train has been derailed. God damn. So, yeah, I'm I'm curious as to uh, who else is going to watch this after the fact. Yeah, no, we'll see if the subs go down a little. That may happen. I'll still do reactions quite a bit. I'll wait for my eye to heal. Yes. I'm loving this eye so much. And, um, all right, man. You guys have a good one. You take it easy. Chauncey Fat Sack and the Real Official Amazing Adam. And whoever else is watching, if anyone else is, you have a good one.